What's up guys? Hello and welcome to another Maker Monday. I'm glad that you guys were able to join me. Sorry it's been a while since we've been able to do this, but as you know, if you follow my Twitter and my Facebook and stuff, I've been traveling uh, for my work and been all over the place and just haven't been able to sit down and make videos. So I'm glad that I'm back uh, being able to make a few here and there. So in any case, what we're going to do on this video is we're going to be checking out a little bit of some basics. I think we'll do that for the next uh, few videos that we have for um, our Maker Monday. So in this video, we're going to be checking out the basics of a Raspberry Pi. Like, how do you get one of these to start functioning? How do you flash the software and uh, get this thing working? So we're going to check that out. But in that same vein of Raspberry Pis, I'm going to check out basically some news in the Raspberry Pi community is that the Raspberry Pi 4 is now out. Now, those of you who don't know what that is, that is basically the next generation of Raspberry Pi. Uh, the one that I'm holding in my hand right now is just a Raspberry Pi 3 uh, B Plus model. But this one is going to have some cool features. Just a few of them to mention real quick is that it will have up to four gigabytes of RAM, which is quite a bit. Has a new processor that's a little bit more powerful. I can't remember what it clocks in at. Uh, let's see if it'll say. I don't think it'll say, but it's basically a more powerful processor. Um, also, they switched instead of having the single HDMI, uh, full HDMI port on it, they went with two micro HDMI ports, so that way it will support up to two 4K displays, which is actually pretty darn amazing. Also, they went ahead and answered our prayers and gave us some USB 3 uh, high speed ports on there, so we will revisit the uh, network attached storage stuff, building the NAS and things like that using external USB hard drives. Since now we have USB 3, we should be able to get some higher speeds and maybe be able to build a fully functional NAS. So along that same line, there is a chip that is for that right there, if you can see that. That's basically the controller chip for that USB 3. Now, cool known fact, they are using PCIe, so PCI Express, to do that so they get the speed. Now, the good news with that is, meaning if you remove this uh, USB 3 chip off of here, you can actually attach some wires and build yourself a PCI Express port to hook things up like SATA controllers and things like that. So that is actually pretty darn cool hack that is on the new uh, number four uh, system, Pi system. Now, this is only a single pipe in. A lot of people were asking, hey, can I put graphics cards on this thing now? No, 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 we're not there yet. It's only a single pipe uh, PCI Express bus that goes into the processor. So you won't be able to do anything like uh, graphics cards and stuff because most of them, the simplest ones use eight pipes. And then of course, the more advanced ones use 16 pipe technology. So you're not gonna be able to uh, run graphics cards off of this, but you should be able to do uh, some high speed uh, data exchange through the PCI Express bus. So that's some information. Uh, surrounding the Raspberry Pi community currently. So let's go ahead and get started with how we're going to do this Raspberry Pi, just any Raspberry Pi, whether it's the first one ever or the new uh, Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to come to raspberrypi.org and you're going to go over here to the good old downloads section. Then we're going to choose, I'm choosing the Raspbian uh, software for this. There's other softwares, but this one is actually pretty nice. We're up to a new uh, version uh, of Buster instead of Stretch was the last one. So we've got a new revision of Pi software as well. I'm thinking in anticipation for that Raspberry Pi 4. So we just download the zip and extract it. That's all you need to do. And then you will use a uh, tool, uh, which is one that I really enjoy using, which is, let me go black for a minute, Win32 Disk Imager. This thing is a really good uh, imaging software that will put the image onto an SD card. And speaking of SD cards, I picked up a few of these little cards and I'll, I'll show you a little bit of a close up here. Um, some of these little Lexar uh, 16 gigabyte uh, little UCS uh, one. Let's see, where are we at? Class 10, which this is the 95 megabits per second card, which is a very high speed card. Okay. It's not, it's not like your normal, uh, uh, class fours or whatever. They're only like 10 megabits a second. Okay. So this is the high speed one. And this is just a quick moment to put in a shameless plug here for Amazon prime. That was where I purchased this. I actually got two of these for only like uh, 10 bucks or something on Amazon prime day, which was just uh, last week, I think. So if you haven't signed up for Amazon prime, there is, uh, there's a link down in the description. There is 
there's no reason you shouldn't try it out. You get a free trial for 30 days. It also helps the channel. So if you want to help support me and support uh, the videos that are coming, more Maker Mondays and other things, definitely check that link out. You can sign up for 30 days. Just put maybe, I don't know, a reminder in your calendar or something to, to delete it after 30 days or something or whatever. But put it in. You get free two-day shipping. You also get to uh, go in on Amazon Prime Day, which is kind of like Black Friday for Amazon Prime and get cool stuff like this uh, for a very good price. Also, that two-day shipping is awesome. They also give you access to their Amazon Prime video where you get the different uh, streaming services and things like that to come along with it. It is a good deal. So go down there and check that out. Uh, let me know uh, if you enjoy it or not because I, I'm really promoting it. I know my family, we order all kinds of stuff and it saves us a ton in shipping. It's fantastic. So definitely check that out. Now, back to the rest of it. So if we're going to go back into uh, our disk imager, you just pull open uh, the image that you want, which mine is stored here in my Raspberry Pi. So once you get that extracted, you'll have a .img file. You put that in. Then what we do is I'm going to go with, uh, basically, let me go back to being big here, the tool of the day. All right, so we're going to have a couple tools of the day. The first one I'm going to show you is this little guy. It's a USB dongle. I'll put a link down in the description. It will take a standard SD card and a micro SD card, and it has the type A connector on one side and a micro on the other side. So it's actually a very versatile little tool, and uh, you just snap that in and then plug it in to your computer. So I'm going to reach under here, under the desk. Give me a second to get it lined up. It's hard because I can't see what I'm doing. i got to find the USB port. There we go. So once you get that, I got that plugged in. So the software that I'm going to use is this Win32 Disk Imager. Um, it should be good to go. Now, if that disk is not blank, I use a different piece of software, which is called SD. Hold on, I'm going to go black for a minute because I have to approve it for permissions. I use SD Formatter. I'll put a link to both of these down in the description so that way you can uh, check these out. But this one is good for reformatting it if you have to, you know, if you like mess up or you want to just blank it and start over or something. This is a great one. This one does not do the reformatting, but this guy, this guy does. It does really well. So I'll put both those links down there. All we got to do is hit right. Choose yes, we're sure we want to blow everything away and go. And then it will basically install our operating system. So I'll be back once that's over with. Okay, so now once that's done, you may get uh, like an error message or something that says that it, uh, that you know, like there, you have formatting issues or something like that, but just ignore it. Um, that's because it's been partitioned properly. So I'm going to hit OK on this right successful. We're going to exit out of this. And now we're going to retrieve uh, the USB dongle and pull the SD card out of that. And then all you have to do is in the back of a Raspberry Pi, there's the little deal. You're gonna do label side up here and you just poke it all the way in and that's it. So I'm gonna cable this up and we'll uh, fire it up and take a look and see how it did. Okay, so I've gone ahead and powered it up so it should boot up here in a minute. Now, first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to change some uh, settings on this thing to get the uh, graphics to work a little better. So that brings me to the second tool of the day. So while this is booting, I'll show you guys. Here's this little, uh, I don't know, it's a little little keyboard mouse combo deal. So you got a little touchpad mouse and then you got a full keyboard. And the cool thing is, is that in the back of it, you pull out this, now it's not in there, but it has the little USB dongle for it that you plug into the Raspberry Pi. Now I do have it plugged into my Pi. Uh, let's see, see if I can pull it up here and show it to you. All right, so there's my Raspberry Pi. It's all cabled up and everything. And then there's that little dongle. I don't know if you can see that, but. That's basically it. So I got my Raspberry Pi sitting down here on my lap. So if I need to, I can mess with it. But this thing works really well. It's rechargeable, it's lithium. Uh, it just has a little on switch on the side. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn it on and I should be able to navigate here. So let's see, um, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of this. Now, if you can see the resolution is horrible. So we're gonna go fix the resolution on this real quick so we can read it because my HDMI capture card does not read it very good. So we're going to this Raspberry Pi configuration. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna go down here to set resolution. And then I'm gonna pick something that's a little bit, little bit higher. So that way it doesn't look so bad. So let's go over here, hit enter. It'll probably ask me if I want to restart. Yes. So we'll let this reboot. Okay, and through the miracle of time, here we are rebooted. So now, we should be able to get to things. So I'm going to go back to that Raspberry Pi configuration. And we're going to set up a few other things as well. Some things that you want to set up is your interfaces. So we want to come in here and we want to turn on 
SSH allows you to remote to it, as well as VNC. I like having both of those going at once. That's just a standard default thing I like having set up. So we're going to hit OK, and we should, now if I drag myself down here, whoop, we should see that VNC got started up here, and now we need to log on to the internet. So to do this, you have to select which country you're from, and then it'll start scanning for SSID. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick, and then we'll be right back once I get all connected up. Okay, and just like that, I got all connected up after entering the SSID and everything. So now we've got address 192.168.1.248 is the address that this guy has. So let's jump back over to the desktop. I'm gonna move myself back up here. Woo. And then let's jump back over to the desktop view. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and pull up our good old putty. We're gonna change this up. This is gonna be .1.248. And then you're gonna say yes to this little pop-up and then we just log in with username Pi and password Raspberry. And there is your Raspberry Pi. All right, and now also VNC to VNC to it. I use the VNC Viewer app, which is a good little app to use. Um, and here it is, it's right here. Um, I'll go ahead and delete this connection so I can show you what it looks like. You just come up in here and you type it in, 192.168.1.248, hit enter. Um, you're gonna be prompted, it keeps popping up on my other screen here. You're gonna be prompted with this little thing, same thing as the, as the putty, so just hit continue. Um, you'll get another one that's here, just again, hit continue. And then it will then ask you for your login credentials. We're gonna do Pi and Raspberry yet again. And then it finally pulls it up. So there we go. So there's the visual side of it for the VNC. And now we could take and change up the uh, graphical settings we want to, but that's how you VNC and putty. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you uh, have enjoyed the other videos that come out in bits and pieces, um, <laughs> cause it's been a while. <laughs> excuse me for me to get back so i'm glad to be back in the saddle try to be coming out with some more videos for you guys i got some cloud reviews i've got a cool uh avengers thing i think you guys are really going to love that's going to be uh involving 3d printing and things like that check out the t-shirts i don't have one on right now but check out uh teespring and check out the t-shirts down below i think they show up or something uh check those out because i got some really cool uh ideas for that it helps out the channel and i feel like they're priced pretty uh good uh, pretty well and decent so you guys can afford them because some of those places whoo they'll be like 30 bucks for a t-shirt and i think that you know i wouldn't pay that so if i wouldn't pay it i'm not going to roll it to you but anyway so check out the merch down below it's a teespring mi sperry also check me out on all the different socials and with that guys thank you so much for watching and hit that like subscribe and share make sure you ring the bell and we'll see you next time